How was this point? You've come back to the trailer. He's up. You're about to get in the truck. What? How, what's his demeanor like at this point? He's still. You can tell something's wrong. Uh, you still don't know what, but you, something, something's off. Did you get in the truck with Bo? I did. And who was driving the truck? Uh, Bo was driving. And the two of you, did you leave the trailer, go for a ride? Yes, sir. Where did you go? Uh, he started driving towards Rochelle, Abbeville, uh, towards the orchard. And that's, uh, that's outside of Fitzgerald? Yes, sir. Driving, are you smoking cigarettes, anything like that on the Yes, drive? sir. Just usually you got the radio on the you know, windows down, so you know, both of us are smoking. During this drive, the time you're in the truck driving from the trailer to the orchard, is there any conversation between you and Bo? No, sir. He, did, he didn't say anything. Did you ask him any questions? I don't think I did, but I don't recall 100%. What are your emotions during this drive while you're en route to the orchard? Uh, I'm getting more and more worried. Uh, I can tell something's wrong, but I still think Bo's screwing with me. You know, he did that a lot. Where did Bo ultimately take you on this drive? Where did you end the drive? It was, uh, he turned into the orchard, uh, the uh, Hudson Farms. When Bo stops the truck, does he say anything to you? Yes, he said she's over there. Does he motion or gesture anywhere? I, I don't think so. He just, he said that as he, as he was getting out of the truck. And so he got out of the truck? Yes, sir. And did you follow him? Did you get out of the truck as well? I got out. Uh, I wasn't, didn't sure. He made a kind of like a beeline to where he was going and off the, into the clearing. Was he, was he, did he seem hesitant? No, sir. At this point, how are you feeling at this point? When you're at the orchard, he's asked you to get out of the truck, says she's over there. What are you, what are you feeling? I still think he's screwing with me. You know, I think this is a joke. And bogus out of the truck, where specifically, where does he walk? He walks around the front of the truck into the clearing and I take a couple steps towards him and that's when I can I see part of her. And when you say there's a clearing, are you in the are you around are pecan trees around you? No sir, trees? it's it's in the woods. I, I mean a clearing in the woods. Uh, it was not in the orchard. How far you said you saw something where Bo went? Yes sir. How far away did, did Bo walk away from the truck when you stopped? It was maybe 20 feet, 25. And what specifically, as you're walking towards where Bo is, what specifically do you see? I just remember seeing a, a spot of white uh, that was, was kind of covered up. You say covered up, covered up with what? Uh, Lease and limbs and other, I mean, just, you know, covered up. Debris from the trees? Yes, sir. Pine straw, things like that? That's yes, sir. That's a sustained object. You walk towards this spot. Can you tell if it's a person at some point? No, sir, not yet. Not then. Like I said, I just seen something that didn't belong there. When you get when you get close, when you get closer, are you able to tell whether it's a person? You, you could tell it was, uh, yeah. Was could you tell if it was a man or a woman? No, sir. Not then. Was the person laying on their back or their stomach? They were laying face down. Does Bo do anything once you approach within 10 feet or so? Uh, yes, sir. He reaches down. Uh, he he grabs her arm and just flips her over. Was it a was it a violent motion that he made? Yes, sir. 
How was the how was the how did he move her? How did he turn her? It was like I say he just reached down like you would open a cellar door and just or crank a lawnmower, I guess. Does he look at you? Yes, sir. He, he looks at me and says, I told you. Can you see if the person is wearing clothes? They were wearing clothes. She was wearing clothes. At this point, can you tell if it's a man or a woman? Yes, sir. Could you see her face at this point? Somewhat, yes, sir. Did you, did, were you able to identify who this was at that time? No, sir. If he wouldn't have told me, I wouldn't have known who it was. And you said that she's wearing clothes. Can you identify what the clothing was on the body? It was, it was a t-shirt uh, with some type of jogging pants, maybe. Do you remember if she was wearing any kind of shoes, do you recall? No, sir, not that I remember. I think she was, though. At this point, Bo said, I, I told you, does, does Bo say or do anything else at this point? He, he starts walking back to the truck, uh, tells me we got, we got something to do. Uh, I was froze. Uh, I remember him telling me several times, come on. Did you eventually follow him? Yes, sir. Where did y'all go? Uh, we got back in the truck. Uh, he turned around, started to go back towards the, the entrance to the orchard. And, <clears throat> excuse me, where do you go? Do you, do you leave the orchard or what do you do? No, sir, there was a, a type of barn area. Uh, he goes over there, uh, parts, gets out of the truck, uh, starts putting, or breaks open the door and starts putting wood in the back of the truck. And you said he broke open the door. Was the, do you recall, was the door to the barn locked? Yes, sir. And what's in the barn? It was, it was wood. And what does, what does, what did, what does Bo do next? He, he starts putting wood in the back of the truck. Did you help him load the wood? Yes, sir. How much wood did you load into the truck? It was, uh, it was filled the back of the truck up. And this was a full-size pickup truck? Yes, sir. <clears throat> what were you feeling? What were you thinking at this point? I was just in shock. You know, I don't, it's like I was separated from myself. Ryan Duke telling the jury his version of events, his second version. First, he told investigators that he was the one that killed Tara Grinstead. Now he is telling in great detail how his friend, the bully Bo Dukes, as he's uh, been characterized as, actually killed Tara Grinstead and then brought Ryan in to help him dispose of the body. Joining us uh, again this hour, criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Nicole DeBoer in Houston, Texas. Uh, Nicole, the you know this is a tough part for any um, witness, but especially when you're also the defendant, to detail what happened um, during the crime itself. Uh, how do you think he's doing? He's actually doing a very good job. You know, his biggest difficulty, as you've already pointed out, is that he has told the police a completely different story about what happened, where he takes all the responsibility. And now he's telling the jury a story that involves him taking none of the responsibility and being completely shocked by what has occurred. Um, all of that said, the story he's telling in direct examination is compelling uh, because he is admitting to other wrongdoing. He is admitting to sort of what we would, I think, just generally all agree is bad behavior and that he doesn't report any of this. Um, and it is uh, somewhat emotional. You know, that said, it is hard to imagine how that aligns in the jurors' minds with the original story where he says he's the one that did it himself. 
He is about as uh, far away from, let's say, an Amber Heard in terms of his characteristics. He's not turning and looking at the jury. He's not overly dramatic. He is really dialed in and almost monotone, but he's somehow conveying emotions. We're not even in the room, but you can feel it through the television. Um, how important is the way you tell a story when you're on that hot seat, the witness stand? I think it is incredibly important. And the jurors are just watching your every facial expression. They're watching your hands. They're watching how you sit. Uh, they're, they're hearing the tone in your voice. They're looking for cues in terms of how you communicate with the lawyer. The lawyer communicates with the client. Uh, is there you know, some kind of uh, dissatisfaction on either party's face, if you will, about a question that's being asked or the answer being given? So his demeanor on the stand and being able to answer these questions is as important as the answers themselves. And his characteristics that he's showing now in direct, they seem to be perfect for Cross because he can keep this monotone, this, this exact same persona in Cross and it keeps up with what we saw in direct and it, it'll be hard to, might be hard to, to, to get him to budge. That's certainly true, and I think that the prosecution uh, in Cross should be doing everything they can to sort of uncover uh, a different version of this personality. Certainly, there is a lot of, one would hope anyway, a lot of preparation that goes into a direct examination between the client and the lawyer, uh, talking about the topics that will be covered and uh, the appropriate ways in terms of demeanor to respond in the courtroom. All of that is generally prepared. What is less prepared is cross-examination because you don't know exactly what the other side is going to be asking you. You can do all you can to predict it and to be prepared for how you will you think you will respond, but if the prosecution is successful in surprising him with the way the questions are asked or the questions themselves, you may see a very different person on cross than what you saw in direct for any witness. Mm -hmm. We'll have to wait and see. Coming up, gruesome testimony from Ryan Duke. He tells the jury that Bo Dukes fondled Tara Grinstead's body before they burned it. That's next. 3200 now. Welcome back. This week, Court TV is airing the case of the Beauty Queen murder trial. It's the defendant on the stand today. It is uh, Ryan Duke, this man here. He is the key to the case in terms of his defense. He's the witness. And this could be the turning point for the jury and what we know is an unexpected verdict. Well, that's what we'll say. It's an unexpected. Right now, Duke is taking the jury through the gruesome narrative about what he says he and Bo Dukes did with Tara Grinstead's body in the woods. Let's get you back into court. Once you arrive back at where the body is, what happens next? Uh, he gets out of the truck. He tells me, come on, because, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I don't know. I say it was like I was watching myself. I was, was there, but I wasn't. Uh, he, he tells me, come on, get out of the truck. And uh, that's where he goes back to where she's at. Miss Grant says that. So you get out of the truck, you follow him over there? Yes, sir. And how was Bo's demeanor at this point when you're back at the bottom? Yeah. He was almost excited. You know, he's cheerful. You know, it was... I don't know the right word. He walked back over to the body does Bo do anything to the body? He, he tells me to help him pick her up. Did he touch the body or anything before? He did. What did he do? He, he pushes up her shirt, starts following her. Did he look at you when he did that? It was like I wasn't there. You know, I, I 
I remember telling him to stop. And I remember how he looked at me. You know, it was like I'd never seen him before. How did he look? I can't describe it. I don't have the words to describe it. Did you say anything? Uh, other than to tell him to stop touching her. Did he stop? I think so. Did he did he cover her back up? Did he pull her shirt back down? No. What happened next? He tells me, come on, we got to move her. And what do you do? What the, what do the two of you do? I, I grab her by by her feet and help pick her up. Did Bo help pick her up as well? He did. Did he pick her up by the arms? Yes, sir. I sustained that objection, Mr. Gibson. What happened next? Picked her up. We placed her on the, the tailgate of the truck. Was down. Placed her on the back of the truck. How did she look when you came over to her? She was beat up. She had bruises on her arms and legs. I said I wouldn't have recognized her. At the time you helped him pick her up, um, could you could you identify who, who she was at that point? No. How was her hair? It was, it was over her face. So you and Bo put her on the tailgate of the truck, and what, what happened next? He told me to get back in the truck. Did you get back in the truck? Yes, sir. And then what What the two of you do next? He, he drives. He drives further down into the orchard. Do you drive, I guess, what direction in the orchard? Are you, are you, are you driving in the pecan portion or the, the pine tree it's, area? It's kind of in the middle. You know, it's in between the, the pecan trees and the, the woods. And where do you ultimately drive to? Do you, do you come to a stop at some point? It's basically the, uh, the orchard ends, and they kind of you know, does another U-turn and backs up into a clearing. And is the clearing in the, uh, the area with pine trees or with pecan trees? It was in the pine thicket. Had you ever been to that particular location before? No, sir. So Bo pulls in, does a U-turn, you said. Um, what happens then? When Bo starts to unload the wood. Did Bo say anything to you? He told me to get out and help him. Did you get out of the truck? I did. Did you, did you, did you help him unload the wood? I did. What'd y'all do with the wood? He started to kind of stack it or lay it out. Was it near the truck? Wasn't far. As you unload the truck, get the wood out, what happens next? What do you do? That's why I figure out what he, you know, he's fixing to burn. What happens next? What's your, what's your reaction at this point? I, I vomit. I should have dry even I'm crying. Does Bo say anything? He starts laughing at me. Did you say anything to Bo? 
I don't think I could say anything at that point. Once the wood's stacked up, what what do y'all do next? Bo tells me to help him put her on the wood. And did you <clears throat> did you help him? I did. Move the body. I did. And once you place the body on the wood, what happened next? Oh, uh, back out, almost out of the clearing, kind of. You back out, like you mean you walk back out? Yeah, I told Bo, I, I can't be here, you gotta take me home. What happened next? He just started putting wood on top of it. And then what happened? He, he lit her on fire. What was his expression, his demeanor when that happened? It's like he wasn't there. Gripping testimony, still with us, Nicole DeBoard in Houston, Texas. Um, this is really the, the moment where jurors are, I'm sure, analyzing everything he says, er, how he says it, because it is crucial. Because um, what if, if he's saying is true, then um, he's got a, a legit shot. Watching it from afar, um, your, your thoughts? You know, it's compelling, and it's compelling in part because of all of the absolutely horrid, awful things that he's admitting to participating in and doing. Um, he is not trying to sugarcoat his own involvement, although he is trying to sort of pass the buck, if, if, in my opinion, and, and blame the conduct you know, on this bully. Um, that said, he's still saying to this jury, you know, I did these absolutely wretched, horrible things, and in great detail. What do you think of the moment where he says he was throwing up and then uh, Bo laughs at him? That um, obviously is this continuing the, the, to perpetuate this theme that Bo Dukes is not only the ringleader, but a bully. Exactly. You know, he's uh, sort of maniacal, really, is what the, the intent of this testimony is to paint this other individual as very controlling, and monstrous and the one in charge and making the decisions you know again uh, if the jurors believe it they have to disbelieve the original statement so that is the deepest problem with the testimony that said because the details are so graphic and so horrible and do involve uh, you know the person testifying it is somewhat compelling yeah, and, and this is the way he does, he's telling this portion, his mannerisms, um, it, again, it, it sets himself up to withstand what I'm assuming is going to be a rigorous cross-examination, likely a different style, because right now it's very methodical, as we always see in direct with a defendant on the stand, it's question, answer, question, uh, we'll probably get some staccato question, a little more on a cross, we'll have to wait and see. Coming up, Ryan Duke describes the events following the murder and why he was so scared of Bo Dukes.